Yes, got it. Yeah. Right. Okay, Naomi, um, please uh, introduce yourselves and um, and let's uh, leave the floor up to you. Thanks, Jim. Um, so yeah, hi, I'm Naomi Beckett. I work in the uh, Digital Education Office uh, at the University of Bristol. I'm a Senior Digital Education Developer. Um, and with me today is Olivia Muggleton, Georgie Pitts and Helena Thornton, who are all Student Digital Champions in the DEO. Um, they study law and psychology, so not technical subjects, um, not really sort of digital subjects, but they're all really interested in um, digital education. Um, uh, Helena, Georgie and Olivia have actually been working with us since July 2021, so coming up sort of nine months with us now. Um, so we have sort of maybe a sort of smaller sub team within the um, sort of student digital champion team because they've been with us for such a long time and they were really really interested to sort of share their thoughts and experiences um, with sort of like-minded people so um, we're just going to sort of take you through a few of the sort of highlights experiences of the student digital champion teams sort of how it got set up and sort of thinking about like challenges and limitations as well so we'll sort of run through everything um, and then yeah open to questions and please questions in the chat um, as we go through. So the Student Digital sort of Champion project came about um, in autumn 2020. So right in the middle of the pandemic, obviously, we realised that because the, the DEO is a very sort of staff facing team, we realised that we were actually producing a lot more student facing content and um, we just there was a lot more going on that we felt like we needed sort of more of a student facing team sub team within the DEO. Um, one of the big things that um, started this project was the results from the digital insight survey that we had done that summer. Um, a huge part of the sort of feedback in that was how students didn't feel like they had a voice. Um, when they were sort of thinking about their digital experience and how they wanted to collaborate more and um, so that was really the sort of kickoff of the project we realized we needed to be working with students um, and we actually started with the student union funding and recruiting the students for um, the digital education office um, and we recruited 12 students across all faculties um, which was quite sort of daunting at the beginning. We weren't really sure how it was going to work, but we created a team site. We ran training with them and um, it started from there. They they were given three month contracts with the option to extend if they wanted to. Uh, it was a paid position. Uh, they didn't need to have any technical um, experience. They just needed to have a um, an interest in online learning and um, digital education. Um, it, there wasn't an interview process. We had an application form where they answered some questions to do with digital education and their sort of experiences, and we sort of took it from there. So um, that's really where the project started. We're now in our um, third run of students, of sort of student digital champions team. So we recruit 12 each time, um, but we have a lot of students wanting to extend. Um, so, which is great because we get to work more with them and have a bit more of a um, like working relationship with them. So um, that's sort of how we're that's sort of how we've uh, done it. And the the sort of main the start of the um, of their sort of job was to sort of go out to their course reps and get that really vital feedback um, from the students and their peers. Um, about their sort of digital experience at the university and they the sort of very primary thing that they were doing was coming back to us with that feedback and we were thinking about what we could do to change that um, from there it sort of the students sort of took on their own interest they might have picked up a bit of feedback that they thought they wanted to run with um, and we sort of ran projects um, from there the the great thing about it was that we sort of worked in collaboration with the DEO. So obviously in sort of my team, we have a lot of people with 
really sort of quite a variety of experience, you know, video production or, you know, creating yeah, sort of animation online. Um, so the students were able to sort of go to our team and say, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to create, um, this is what I think the students need. And they were able to work with our team to sort of create outputs. Um, so that was sort of the main part of the, their role. Another part is just we have them as like a hive mind. So the digital education office can sort of go to the students and get those really quick bits of student insight that sort of are actual like real game changers in projects that we're working in as well. So that's really how it started. Um, after the first, first run, we sort of ran a sort of evaluation and um, it was decided then that the DEO were able to fund the project. And so we were given the budget to run with it, um, which we've got through the rest of this year and hopefully sort of onwards. Um, but it's been a really, really fun project to work with the students. Um, and I'm just going to let um, the students, so I think Olivia is going to sort of start just firstly explaining a few of the sort of projects that they've been working on, just so you can get a bit of an idea of um, the kind of things that they've been looking at. So I'll pass over to Olivia. Hello, so I'm Olivia. Um, so I've just talked about one of my favourite contributions to the project so far. Um, so with coronavirus being quite a rapid change in uh, all of university's traditional modes of teaching, um, moving to online learning methods, I thought it'd be quite useful to um, reduce some of the detachment and disconnect um, that might be felt by the students from the university by introducing a student's voice in the form of a walkthrough guide. Um, so I created this walkthrough to illustrate from a student's perspective the uses and functions of Microsoft Teams um, and then with some tips from my own experience that a new or existing student might find quite useful to know. Um, then the walkthrough can be found on the DEO's website for all the students to see and I'm quite proud of it considering that I'd never previously I'd never created or voiced any videos like this before um, and especially at proud because I've been told since that the walkthrough got quite good feedback um, so that success then led me to get involved with the digitally skilled video series um, so the, there I voiced another I did another voiceover for the online identity video um, that was created and during that, I worked a bit more closely with Chris Anthony, one of the DEO team members, um, and I learned how to use a whole new audio editing program, which I'd never come across before. It's quite, uh, quite detailed and technical. Um, so I think that video also went down quite well. Um, I'm quite confident now in creating and contributing to these student voiceover type projects and I'm now even looking at uh, helping out our new student ch digital champions who are looking to do something similar. Um, yeah so that was my highlight of contribution so I'll pass on to Georgie now who will probably give a, a, her highlights as well. Okay cool yeah so hi I'm Georgie. Um, I'm going to be talking about the accessibility survey that we created. Um, so having been hired specifically to work on digital accessibility and how students with disabilities might struggle to access online resources, the first thing we decided to do was generate a university-wide survey that gauged students' awareness of what digital accessibility was and how accessible they considered their course to be. And we included some questions that are on the slides, um, like who do you think accessibility applies to? Where do you think you can find accessibility support? And ask them to rate on a scale how accessible certain resources were, like online lectures, exams and readings that they um, are often set. Um, the process of generating the survey was interesting, particularly because of the specified code of conduct um, for student surveys that we had to consider. Um, and we really had to tailor our questions for students and make sure it adhered to the regulations as well as 
carefully considering how and when to release it to avoid survey fatigue. Um, and this background research was critical, I think, for making the survey a success. Um, in terms of results, they were really interesting and suggested improvements included better captioning on video lectures and they suggested ways to increase engagement with asynchronous content. Um, but most importantly, it showed that students need better direction when looking for support with accessibility um, and might not even realise that there is support available for them. In fact, 54% of respondents answered, I don't know, when asked where they would look for support. Um, so I'm now looking into ways we can improve the issues raised by the respondents. For example, I'm considering how we can promote Glean, which is an innovative note taking tool, um, which looks to be beneficial for students with dyslexia. Um, but significantly, the DEO used this feedback to improve their digital, digitally ready Blackboard course um, and ensure students were made aware of this information from the start of their university experience. Um, so that's what I have to say. I'll pass over to Helena now. Hi, I'm Helena. So my focus so far, my main focus has been on digital skills resources and looking at how these can be promoted to students who might not otherwise consider them a priority. So I started by looking in depth at the JISC digital skills framework for students and investigating different ways that the framework could be made more user friendly and um, really give students a good idea of where they're at and where they might want to try and improve. So I worked with a team of other digital champions to conceptualise the framework as a tree, um, showing foundational skills as sort of the roots and trunk, and then other categories split into branches and leaves. And so the end illustration we created with help from the DEO team is on the right. And we included some examples and definitions below it, which was made available on the website. And so the hope is that this makes the framework accessible to students in a more appealing and visual way so that they're more likely to really take those elements into consideration. And then I've also helped to test the GIST discovery tool um, as so for more for students who wanted to look more in depth at um, their digital skills. And I've also spent some time trialing and giving feedback on the digitally ready courses that our university designed for, well, the DEO designed for students, which I remember using myself as I started university. So that was really rewarding to then be able to give some feedback on the second one and look at how you can take it further. Um, so yeah, that was really, that was also a highlight for me. And then coming to these projects, from a student's perspective as someone who doesn't have many digital skills um, has been really useful as it's taught me a lot more and it's also meant that I can contribute completely from a user's perspective and sort of create what I think might be helpful. well what I know was helpful for me. Thanks Anna. Um, so yeah, as you can see, sort of quite a lot of different um, work that the students have been doing, um, and that's all coming out of them going out to, the, to students in the university and asking questions and um, getting that feedback and that student voice is just coming straight back into the DEO. So it's so val valuable and just been really, really reward rewarding. Um, so yeah, I, we all just wanted to like offer a bit of our reflection and thoughts of the um, Student Digital Champion um, project, um, because I think there's been, for all of us, for staff and students, there's been a lot of learning going on um, as the project's sort of gone on. We've been running for sort of two years now, almost two years. Um, so I will let the students uh, sort of go through their sort of um, sections in a minute, but from a, a staff uh, perspective, um, it was myself and my colleague Suzanne Collins that started the project um, and it's been a huge sort of learning um, curve for us. I've never, I haven't worked that closely with students before, I've always worked in a very sort of staff facing role. So um, being able to work with students, um, especially I think, you know, 2020 was a pretty horrific year. Um, I think as a sort of learning technologist, we were put on under sort of a huge amount of pressure and it felt quite 
at times that um, nothing was going right and everything was quite difficult and working with students who have, are so motivated and so interested in the work that you're doing has been just wonderful um, and Olivia, Georgie and Helena are also all fab um, but I'll let them sort of share their work but I think one of the the best things that has come out about for has come out of it from the staff's perspective is um, the skill building that we've seen the students um, build and that's not something that we thought of really when we first started the project we just thought you know we're just getting the student voice to sort of help student student experience from the DEO for the DEO but one of the things that we've seen is when we sort of talk to the students how much they're actually learning and they're sort of gaining digital skills but also professional skills like for their sort of future careers so that's been a massive thing for me that's been really rewarding um but i will let uh, olivia sort of talk about her experience thank you naomi um yeah so we've already given a recap of our favorite contributions but i also thought it would be quite useful to show what the DEO and the Student Digital Champion role has done for us um, in terms of our personal development. Um, so personally, I really enjoyed uh, my time as a Student Digital Champion. Um, it's given me the chance to gain some real work experience, um, uh, developing crucial skills like digital literacy and putting things like this presentation um together and working completely remotely through teams um i've also been learning how to effectively communicate my ideas and collaborate with my fellow champions um, it's also enhanced my ability to manage my own time effectively because it's a completely self-regulated role as to so speak um, so on, a, on a more personal note as well, I feel like it's really built my confidence um, and it's given me a strong sense of personal fulfillment because I feel like I'm part of an amazing group of people who are actually making a difference to the student experience and that my voice is actually being valued um, valued and, he and heard. Um, so yeah, so that was my reflections on my personal development, but I'll pass on to Georgie who will offer his. Um, yeah, so I would obviously echo everything that Olivia has just said, um, but also I think one thing important to my personal development in this role is the environment that we work in really facilitates the generation of ideas. Um, and I think this is probably the first job role I've had that has allowed me to pick something I'm interested in and work on it creatively and freely. Um, and I think Naomi and Suzanne and all of the others have always said we want you to get stuff out of this position so make sure that you're putting in like what you want to get out of it so that was always really nice um but the role has also been quite challenging at times in a good way and there are definitely situations where i think how can i improve this or what is something that we could do to help um and struggle to find an answer but those challenging situations are what we're here to advise on and help with and it is rewarding being able to work towards solutions to those problems um, and use your creativity and initiative to do that um, but also this role has developed my practical research and analysis skills um, and i've always had to research and analyze in academic scenarios but this role has required me to analyze real life issues and real life obstacles um, that you come across when trying to solve those issues um, and like what um, Naomi said when she was um, talking about this, this has definitely had a notable impact on my graduate job applications. Um, and I would credit this role as being one of the reasons that I received an offer. Um, for example, it gives me great examples of when I've used my initiative, how I've worked towards real life problems and collaborated with others independently. Um, and it also helped that the role I applied to was research based, which is what this um, champion position is all about um, and doing the accessibility survey and analyzing the results seem to really impress potential empl employers um, so yeah I'll pass on to Helena now hi so similar to Georgie I think I found that like self-led initiative driven element of the role um, both 
challenging, quite challenging, but also really rewarding. I've loved that I get to choose and shape the projects that I want to be part of, because I think as a student, you're not necessarily taught that level of independence. You're often, there's a lot of independent learning, but you're often told what to learn and what to create. So being able to learn how to drive that yourself and work out where there are gaps and what needs to be done has been really valuable. And then again, has been really good at, has been really helpful when, when it comes to applications um, and looking at sort of transferable skills. So I also love that the role gives me a voice and the opportunity to reflect on my own learning and the experiences of others around me. That's really empowering and make, to be able to make use of those experiences. And so it, the roles also prompted me to take this big interest in existing research that has been done into how digital learning practices have changed um, during the pandemic and then after it. And I'm now, I've now spent all this time looking into that. I'm really enjoying combining that, those, those findings with more personal experiences and considering my own takes on how the pandemic should no how the pandemic has and should alter higher education going forward uh, which is obviously a really time relevant discussion so it keeps things relevant this um it's definitely led me to engage in these more relevant ideas uh, and it's gone further than just a role it's now much more of a personal interest for me thanks Helena um so yeah, really sort of good experiences from um, the team, which is really, um, really nice to see. Um, they, the, the students work with us about, they have three hours a week contracted, so it's not a huge amount of time, um, but the amount of work that they've been doing has just been um, fantastic. So yeah, it just, it's just really nice to hear it um, coming from um, Georgie, Helena and Livia as well. Um, so obviously, even though there's some there's been sort of some really sort of great work going on there's as the students mentioned there have been quite a lot of challenges as well um when we sort of started the role you know it's not always easy to get everything right straight away and every time you know a student finished their contract we were always making sure that we spoke to them and said what can we improve in this role in the future and it was really important to me that we were constantly evaluating how the role was going because it was very important that the students were getting a good um, experience of the role. And as sort of Georgie mentioned, we were getting so much out of the role, of, of out of the students working for us, that we wanted to make sure that they were getting a good amount out of their role as well. So it was just always important to be thinking about things that might not be going right and how we can sort of improve those um, things to sort of change. Um, so I'll let, I think if Georgie's going to talk about the challenges, but if I'm wrong, then someone else speaks, but I'll just let that, um, Georgie speak and then I'll sort of talk about it from a staff perspective. Yeah, okay, um, I'll go first. Um, yeah, so there have obviously been some like challenges and limitations um, and things that haven't quite gone to plan. Um, the main thing that I've noticed is that some of our ideas don't end up being feasible in the end. Um, for example, alongside the student survey that I mentioned, we also developed a staff survey which focused on understanding staff awareness of digital accessibility and whether or not they focus on making their content accessible. And after creating the survey, it wasn't given the green light because the rules regarding staff surveys are even more regimented than student ones um, with specific time periods and regulations. And so it wasn't possible at that time. Um, and similarly, it can be a struggle to collaborate with other areas of the university. Um, we also got quite far in the process of developing course rep training, which focused on helping students with disabilities access their course materials and making course reps aware of their challenges. And again, this didn't quite materialize because communicating with those in charge of training the course reps was quite difficult. Um, and I suppose this comes down to the bureaucracy of universities and the challenges that poses to making large scale change. Um, so I think Helena might speak next, so I'll pass on to her. Hi, yeah, I think just adding on to that, it touches on another difficulty we've found surrounding represent 
like representing properly the students from all across the university because different departments have they have made such different uses of digital tools in learning and teaching and as a result it's been really important to reflect on like how the students from different departments need different resources and already have varying skill levels and therefore tools um resources for tools have been of differing relevance and I know that that's something that I really like has been taken into consideration by the DEO when hiring us is that they they aim to hire students from across faculties so that we've all had different experiences and different things we can bring to the role but it was definitely this diversity of needs was definitely something that needed to be taken into consideration um, across the different projects we choose to carry out and has really highlighted the importance of communicating together on what we're working on. Yeah, exactly. And it, yeah, huge sort of le learning lessons for us just to sort of, um, you know, and it was great to sort of get those, get those sort of um, thoughts back from the students and the feedback, just thinking about it in the student perspective is just completely different to how the staff would be thinking about it. Um, so just on a sort of staff perspective, um, obviously, so we've been running it for just coming up to two years now, the, the Student Digital Champion project. And as I said, we've been constantly sort of evolving um, the project as it goes. There's been things like we, we run drop-ins um, every week, which was something we weren't sure of at the beginning, but the students were really positive about those drop-ins where they could just come in and chat to us um, if they needed to. So those kind of things we've carried on. Um, a big thing that I think I've had to learn is, you know, understanding students' needs when it comes to the role. Um, we students, I guess, as you know, even in my team, we all work in very different ways, and that's the same with the students. And it's important to always get that right when you're working with the students. And we didn't always get it right. Um, for example, they're thinking about like uh, group projects and and stuff, things like that, and just it was always it was always good because if a student wasn't you know enjoying it or wasn't having the best time they'd be able to come to us and say i'm not sure this is working for me and we were able to look at ways to make sure that they felt like they were getting the most out of the role and they were actually having an enjoyable experience um georgie touched on this but definitely a really difficult one for us has been on certain projects just having to say no um I think everyone probably understands that we just can't do everything um, and it's sometimes quite hard when students come with really great ideas from feedback that they've got from students and we just have to say that certain things aren't feasible. Um, the really nice thing about that though is that what you know at the beginning we sort of think oh we know we have to say no but now we start think now we're able to sort of start thinking about it more we're able to think okay can we do stuff in different ways and I think that's a really positive thing that's come from um, come from that sort of limitation is that students are sort of thinking about things differently. So if they can't, you know, for example, do a survey, they think, well, what can I do? Um, so it actually has been a real sort of positive um, outcome of those sort of situations where we can't always do what the students want to be doing. Um, and the last thing really is just admin of the role. Um, the Student Digital Champion Project I manage the students, but it's not my only um, job within my sort of um, within my job role. So it can take a lot of work. And now we're sort of in the swing of things. It is a lot easier. But at the very beginning, um, we did feel like we were wanting to sort of check in with the students a lot and sort of make sure that they were sort of doing the right things. Now, um, in the training, we really put the onus on the students to say, if you need to talk to us or if you need help you need to get in touch with us and that seems to be working really well because students will just pop in you know half an hour in our calendar or they'll come into the drop-in if they want to sort of some feedback on some work or they'll go through anything or they sort of you know I'm not sure what to look at this week have you got some ideas so again it's been a pro it's been sort of development of um from the very beginning of when we sort of had a lot of admin to do now we have slightly less because um we do say to the students they need to be doing more of the work and making sure that they're sharing their work on teams which is where we have our sort of collaborating um group sites so 
it's, I guess the limitations get a bit, it has been a bit of a challenge, but we're sort of getting there with it. Um, so we, yeah, hopefully we, we would love to carry the Student Digital Champions on. I think we probably will because we get such good feedback from them. Um, we have done a recent recruitment in March, so we're back up to our 12 um, Student Digital Champion team. Um, we wanted to do another recruitment after Christmas because it allows the first years to apply and we had a huge amount of applications from first years um, so that was a really nice thing because it's just another sort of those students have spent you know a, a year of online learning in school so they have some really sort of differing opinions and um, like I mentioned on the slide this group of um, students who we have um, you know every group is different but this group have some really sort of fun ideas, like some quite different ideas, quite some challenging ideas. Um, so it's been great to sort of work with them and sort of work out if we can sort of get to do the work that they want to do that they think is important. Um, so yeah, a few of the things that we're sort of looking at. Um, well, I know the students are actually on holiday from today, but when they're back, um, Instagram takeovers, they're very interested in Instagram. So we're sort of going to sort of think about um, takeovers on the student union or the University of Bristol careers Instagram pages to sort of um, get our reach out of sort of what support we offer. Um, digital skills that like Olivia mentioned, we're sort of still pushing our digital skill video series, which is really important uh, to the DEO. Um, we have uh, three or four um, postgrads in the team this, uh, in this run. So they're really sort of interested in the resources for postgrads. They feel the, the feedback that they've got so far from their course reps is that that demographic demographic of students maybe was missed a bit um, in the sort of digital experience um, in the last sort of couple of years. And um, yeah, and as Georgie mentioned, there's been quite a lot of work that's come out of the accessibility survey. So um, Georgie and a few other sort of team members are, are sort of starting to look at assistive technology and sort of how they can highlight those those sort of softwares and the information to students. So there's lots going on. Um, and we have the students up until about June, July, and then we will think about doing another recruitment over the summer. Um, but yeah, that's sort of everything from us. Um, if there's any questions for myself or the students, then yeah, please let us know. <laughs>